All right, what is up everyone? Welcome back to the In My Devils YouTube channel. My name is Arya and Champions League is back. Finally, after just over a year of United being out of the competition, after, what was it, March 2018, when United had that beautiful, beautiful night away to Paris, we have come full circle, still managed by Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, who's coming off a great result against Newcastle when it was very, very needed on Saturday night. Newcastle are back in action Tuesday night, back in Paris, where it all really started. Um, United come into it on a tough-ish uh, run of form, coming into a huge, huge seven games stretch following PSG of big game after big game, where this team is going to need to step up. And I'm sure all United fans, although maybe a little worried, are hugely looking forward to, to being back in primetime football. No more Thursday nights, at least for this season. It's about Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and United are in the group of that with PSG, Red, Red Bull, Leipzig, and Istanbul, Basque Sesher. So I think there's quite a lot of nights under the lights to look forward to. But uh, without further ado, we are here to discuss a combined 11 between United and PSG, and I think the preview will be linked in the description if you want to listen about the game a little bit more. But we're here to discuss the players. And I have opted for a 4-3-3 formation. Um, I think it's a classic. And with the, with the talent that both teams have on the wings and in the midfield, I think it, it's, it's the perfect formation to kind of complement uh, both teams and, and give you a lot of options to pick from in order to make the strongest 11. Uh, it's... It was a difficult one because obviously as a person covering United, as a fan, you kind of tend to be biased towards your team. And, and sometimes those those uh, combined 11s are difficult to choose from. But I think I went for um, a pretty objective um, 11. I, I tried to be as objective as possible. And I think, I like to think that I'm a, I'm a cold-headed United fan that I don't really put that bias in there as much in, in kind of objective discussions. So I do see United's weaknesses. I do see where other clubs are better and how what United should do better. And I try to kind of go in there with that kind of a brain and not to try and just kind of big up United players and, and kind of um, talk down on the opposition players because obviously we have to accept that PSG are a huge side. Champions League finalists now, they're very established. They're dangerous. They're star-studded. And this will be one hell of a game. So... In this 4-3-3, I went with David De Gea in goal. It was between him and Kaylor Navas. Obviously, Navas kind of solidified himself as one of the world's top goalkeepers. But I do think that Real Madrid were after David De Gea to replace him. They ended up getting Thibaut Courtois in there. So I do think even though De Gea maybe has been worse than Navas over the last 18, 12 months combined, um, Overall, he is still the superior goalkeeper, and I think any club, if I have to choose from them too, they will go for David De Gea, and I am doing that too, and he shows just what he is capable of against Newcastle as well, that United can still count on him in the big moments. In that back line, I went with, obviously, a four. I chose two wing back, two fullbacks from United, partnered by a centre-back duo from PSG. I will go into that in a second. First off, my right back, Aaron Juan Basaka. Fantastic goal on the weekend. I think defensively, there are a few that are better than him in world football at the moment. He's looked a little shaky recently and maybe a bit off the pace, maybe a bit fatigued because he went from Crystal Palace, who only really played him in the Premier League. And not even that much because he was still breaking through to, to coming to United and having to play every three days and having to be available and at the top of his game every three days. So that can be a little bit overwhelming. But now... When Basaka kind of looks, maybe as he's going back to his old self a little bit, getting up that confidence, scored a fantastic goal, like I said, took it very well, very confidently. He started going forward more, which is something that most fans really wanted him to see improve upon. And I think that we are still yet to see the best of him on both ends of the field. And he is very reliable, obviously, as a defender, like I said, though. So it was really between him and Florenzi. And I think Florenzi is a very good player. But kind of down on the edge side a little bit. And I think you just have to go with Aaron Wan Bissaka. Um, at centre-back, I went with Marquinhos and Kimpembe from PSG. And initially I put in Marquinhos and Harry Maguire. But as I said, objectively, I think just on form alone this season, but also the latter end of last season, Marquinhos and Kimpembe led PSG to that Champions League final. Um, and, and I thought it would be only fair to put both of them in there. 
as United really haven't been competing at those heights. The defence to start this season has been atrocious. 12 goals and four league games conceded is just unacceptable for United. And I don't think a blame for that can go for Maguire. But obviously in recent times he's had quite a lot of issues on and off the pitch. He struggled for form. He looked much better against Newcastle. But I think that, that PSG partnership that they have going on right now is very good. And I think both of them would go straight into the United first eleven. I think if United signed both of them, they probably both would start under normal circumstances, of course, if Maguire wasn't the captain. So I think Marquinhos and Kimpembe deserve their credit here. And they are the duo in a, at the center of the defense. And on the left, I have Alex Tellez. Obviously, it might be a little bit out of left field, this one, because he hasn't yet played for United, but we know his credentials from Porto. Um, we know how many goals he's able to contribute to not only from the spot but he's also very good with the crossing he's good on the he's good off the dribble he is sound defensively and i think he might be one of the more anticipated debuts coming for united i would assume that he probably will get the nod against psg after luke shaw put in 90 minutes against newcastle um, to see what he can do and he is sure to to bring uh, some excitement to united's left flank combining with marcus rashford daniel james and all those and i think PSG are not really settled in that position yet. There is Kujawa, there is Bakker, but they're kind of rotating. There, is, there isn't a nail left back there at the moment. Obviously, they had Luca Dinia, but he left. So I do think that United are more secure in that position. And overall, I think Alex Telles deserved a nod here, even though he hasn't obviously made a competitive appearance for United just yet, but it's coming. Middle of the midfield, obviously the trio. That was a difficult one because obviously United have a lot of options in midfield. As do PSG, I just think that United's midfield overall is better. That's why I chose to go with two United players and one PSG player. So at the heart of midfield, in that holding midfielder, I went with Marco Verratti. Of course, one of the world's best, by far the best midfielder in PSG, in my opinion. And just a fantastic overall player when you compare him to the likes of Fred, McTominay, Matic, who kind of compete with him in that position. He is heads over heels when it comes to the culture of play, football IQ, the ability to hold the ball up, to, to slow play down, to speed it up, to play in between the lines, to play progressive passes forward. He was just a different level of footballer, uh, the, the pillar of the Italian national team as well, and obviously the pillar of the PSG team since that rebuild, since that takeover happened there. And in their rise to, 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 to European stardom, really, uh, Marco Verratti has been there. He has been that foundation in the middle of, of the pitch. And he has to be in this team as that number six kind of a player. And then in front of them, I went with Bruno and Pogba. I think Bruno kind of picks himself in there. His statistics since joining United are absolutely insane. 27 goal contributions in 28 matches in all competitions. It's, it's ridiculous. You can't not pick him going forward. Excellent eye for goal. I for that killer pass, always trying to go forward, never really looks back. Sometimes he gets criticised for that, but, but it's needed at a club like United, especially when 90% of the time you're playing clubs that don't want to play football against you. They want to sit back and frustrate you. And Bruno is always trying. So you have to appreciate those kind of players. And again, a leader as well. Fantastic performance in Newcastle on the weekend. Puts him in this team. And Paul Pogba... It's Paul Pogba. He's on the level of Marco Verratti when it comes to that, that central midfield, that true central midfield role, because Bruno is obviously that more advanced player. Um, Pogba gets into this team because when you compare him to the likes of Ander Herrera, uh, Idris Agana Gray, um, you have, or even Leandro Paredes, you have to put him in this team. On reputation alone, but also on re ability, he's getting back to his best. Obviously, no preseason. He suffered from COVID-19. He's getting his legs back under him. A very good cameo against Newcastle. A good international break with France. I am sure he will start against PSG and show that, that he belongs. The Champions League is his stage. Players like him have to play there. And when you look at the overall spectrum, he is him and Bruno are better than most of PSG's midfielders individually to get into this side. Maybe as a whole, we will learn otherwise on Tuesday as PSG might very well outclass United in the middle of the park, outwork them, whatever. But on paper, Bruno and Pogba get into this team just in front of Marco Verratti in that classic three where Bruno will be more advanced and Pogba will kind of play that eight box-to-box -box role that he seems to be playing recently for United. 
And then moving into my front three, I think two of those players, you can guess who they are already before I name them. On the left, I have Neymar. On the right, Kylian Mbappe. And it, it pains you to say as a United fan because you would love to put the likes of Greenwood and Rashford in there, but you just can't. Um, those are different level of footballer. I would admit that I think Rashford is close. He's getting there. Obviously, Greenwood is at the beginning of his journey. Rashford is close, but on the background of the Premier League, it's the consistency that hurts Marcus Rashford, and he just cannot get to that level of Neymar and Mbappe yet. When it comes to that conversation, you know, like I said in the midfield, on paper, Neymar and Mbappe get into this side comfortably. It's just, it's just like I said, a different level, different gravy of world football ability, composure, confidence, football IQ, that X factor that Mbappe and Neymar have that led PSG into the Champions League final. You saw Mbappe uh, play for them against Atalanta in the quarterfinal, it was, I believe, where he was barely ready to play. I think Thomas Tuchel said that he was only ready for about 15 minutes of football. He came on in the 60th or 70th minute and just completely changed the game and won them the game when they were down um, in injury time. So it's those kind of players, you know, that you tune in for. It's those kind of players that, as a United fan, you want United to be back in the Champions League to play against those kind of players. Um and it's, it's going to be a fantastic test to see them go up against United's defence. Also a worrying test because United's defence, let's be honest, have not been fantastic recently, as we know, as we've mentioned already in this video. But it's going to be fantastic to see nonetheless United under the lights facing the players, the likes of Neymar and Mbappe um, in, in, a, in a probably fixture of the week. And it's also... I think putting them in a lineup like this, obviously United players aren't going to see this, but it's, it's a good benchmark, you know, to, to work towards, to strive towards that when these kind of videos come about for not only us, but pundits, experts in in higher levels of, of you know, of exposure, that when you look on paper, you, you actually have to think about it a little bit before choosing whether you pick Neymar and Mbappe over the likes of Rashford, if that makes sense. So Neymar and Mbappe on each flank, and in front of them, I went with Anthony Martial as the number nine. I think he proved last season with 23 goals in all competitions that he is capable of playing in that spot. Um, he fought for that number nine jersey. He got it as soon as Romelu Lukaku left United. And he showed that he has the the confidence and the backbone you know, to, to handle being the leader. Because the number nine, most often than not, is the leader going forward he is the one that's responsible for all the goals even if maybe in the likes of roberto firmino at liverpool he doesn't score the most goals in that team but still he is the number nine he is the focal point of that team that everybody looks to and anthony martial by wanting that number nine jersey by stepping up to fill in that role for united became that guy um so yeah, he goes in here because PSG struggle have struggled to find their uh, regular number nine. Obviously, they have Icardi, who isn't really firing in all cylinders. They just loaned in Moise Ken from Everton, who has shown glimpses at Juventus, kind of disappeared at Everton. Now he's going to try to reignite his career at PSG, so it'll be interesting to monitor his progress. And obviously, they have Chupa Moting as well, who has now left and strengthened Bayern Munich. So I think Anthony Marshall was a bit of a no-brainer here. Of course, there's also Edison Cavani, but we haven't seen him in a long time, the former PSG man. He might have been in line to make his debut at his former employers on Tuesday. But as of right now, we haven't seen him. We haven't seen what he is like fitness-wise, what he is like match sharpness wise He hasn't played a lot of football in 2020. So Anthony Marshall goes into this team quite comfortably to lead the line in what would be an absolutely mouth-watering front three to watch as a neutral, as a fan of PSG, or as a fan of Manchester United, let's be honest. So, just to go over it again, and it should pop up on your screen any time now, the graphic, David De Gea in goal, Alex Telles on the left, Marquinhos and Kimpembe in the middle, Aaron Wan-Bissaka at right back, Verratti holding, Bruno and Pogba just in front of him, Neymar on the left, Mbappe on the right, Anthony Martial up front, 4-3-3, and that is my and yours, PSG and United. Combined 11 ahead of Tuesday.